Today we're going to be cleaning, decontaminating, claying, adding ceramic protection, and doing some light to medium oxidation removal on a 32 foot RV. So let's check it out and see what we got. Alright guys, we're going to get right into this one since it was a very long process and I want to try and keep the video as short as possible. Um, as you can see, one of us is going through doing the tires and wheels. Uh, we're using PNS Brake Buster diluted down 4 to 1 in a foam cannon. Um, while the other one is going through and doing a pre-treatment with DIY details, uh, rinseless wash. Um, works really well to kind of get the cleaning process started and break everything down. As soon as the tires and wheels done, I'm going to go ahead and start foaming this down and uh, start the cleaning process while he's still working around the other side and onto the front with the pre-rinse. Um, just using a mixture of DIY details, incredible suds, uh, mixed into a foam cannon along with uh, about an ounce and a half of Purple Power uh, Concentrate Boat Wash. Um, it really, it's more of an alkaline soap. It, it does thin out the foam a little bit, but it really does, I think, at least from my experience, uh, help to break down some of the film and start to loosen everything up. Uh, it makes it much, much easier to clean. Certain tools definitely make the job much faster and easier. Um, you can see we're using a pole arm. It really makes it much, much easier, more efficient. Um, I believe it's a, about a 18, 20 inch, something like that, uh, wide. So we're getting really good passes and contact while we're moving quickly. Um, and we don't have to keep climbing up and down as much to, uh, to get to the top areas. Definitely expedites the process. Um, I'll put links to everything down below in the description. There's a ton of different brands, but you know, they all kind of do about the same thing. Um, this one's just one that uh, I happen to like. It's got a microfiber um, head on it, so you don't have to worry about it scratching or anything. As you can see, we use the long pole arm to get the majority of the surface area and then go through with um, some work stuff detail brushes and hit all of the trim rails, the compartment doors, the lights, the windows, kind of all the trim stuff that uh, you really can't get into with something that big. Not only is the brush great for um, using on big things like an RV or travel trailer, um, it also works really well on vans, um, some trucks, you know, places where you can't quite get to the roof as easily as you can, but um, you know, you want to get it knocked out pretty quick. It does work well. You just have to go through and follow it up with, uh, you know, kind of edge it out a little bit um, with a detail brush, you know, on, as you can see here, going around all the ladder rungs, the license plate, tail lights, you know, the stuff that you really can't get into with that big of a brush, but definitely expedites the whole process. And with the 32 foot RV, you know, you got to try and get it done as reasonable amount of time as possible. We ended up getting this done in, I believe it was just under four and a half hours. Um, that's 32 foot of RV. And we also did the front driver and passenger compartment areas, the carpets, the dash, the console, the seats, conditioned all the leather and got the uh, front cab all cleaned up as well. One of the biggest things to getting any job done quickly is making sure that, you know, you guys are kind of in sync and if you're working with a second person. So as soon as one person is done with something, you know, they start another one and you kind of just follow each other around. As you can see, you know, I'd spray foam down the side. Um, he would start cleaning and then I would start rinsing behind. And then one of us would grab a detail brush and hit all the trim work as well. Eventually you just find a rhythm and you know one person starts something else while the other one's finishing up and, and you just keep the flow going. If you guys like watching detail videos and want to learn some more tips, tricks, and uh, see some product reviews, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. As far as the clay and protection as well as the oxidation removal, um, we're going to be, use DIY, be using DIY Details uh, ceramic gloss along with their clay towel. Um, it works really well on I prefer to have the panel a little bit wet, um, just kind of lightly mist over it with the pressure washer. And then a couple of sprays onto the clay mitt, or the clay towel, I'm sorry. And then, um, you know, three or four sprays onto a panel, depending on the size of the area you're working. And it's a little different for me working on fiberglass gel coat instead of car automotive clear coat. Um, gel coats 
it oxidizes differently. Um, it gets that white chalky thick kind of residue on it. Um, it's it takes a little more abrasion to remove any of that or to polish or correct or anything. So you'll notice that I'm being pretty aggressive with the clay towel on this. I'm using much more pressure than I would normally use on a car or truck. Um, it's just kind of what's called for when you're dealing with gel coat. As we zoom in here, you can see uh, really clearly on, especially on the blue line, the left side of that there, all of the oxidation that's there in the right half as the line tapers down is uh, where it was already done. It's clearly a massive difference when you look at the entire RV, all of the water streaks, water stains, and oxidation. Um, when that's all removed, it, it adds more depth and gloss to the vehicle and it just looks so much better. Plus, with the use of ceramic gloss, you're adding about six to nine months of protection on top of it. One of the nice things about using this process um, with the clay towel as well as the ceramic gloss, it's safe for pretty much all the surfaces you're going to encounter. Obviously not like the awning or anything like that, but windows, fiberglass, the plastic around the boxes, the, and the storage compartments, the um, aluminum fender flares that are painted to match. Uh, it really works good on all that stuff. You're not going to hurt anything or damage anything. Obviously, you don't need to be as aggressive on uh, the application as you do on the fiberglass, and especially in this scenario where we're trying to get rid of some of the oxidation. Uh, but it, it is safe to use on all of those surfaces as well. This customer was actually selling their RV, so they were really, really happy with the way that the results were coming out. Before we were even done, they come out and started taking some pictures of the inside and the outside. So they were very, very happy with the results, and it fit the budget that we were trying to get for them. Here's another area where you could really see the amount of oxidation that came off of the body um, just from doing this process. Like I said, it, it's rather simple. It just takes a little bit of elbow grease as well as some time. The rear of the RV was actually probably one of the worst oxidized areas. Uh, it, it, for some reason, I don't know if it just faced the sun where it was parked more often than not, I would assume, but um, it was very, very faded and dull and chalky. You can really see the difference on how much deeper, uh, more gloss and more shine. The front end and the hood also had a lot of uh, contaminants, as you can see here. This shows how I would normally be using the clay towel, um, keeping it properly lubricated and then just very, very light to no pressure. Um, you can feel when you hit a rough spot, you know where you really feel the transfer of it through the towel. Um, you'll know also when it's gone, you know, it will glide across the paint very smoothly and then just wipe it off with a clean, dry towel and looks perfect. All right, guys, we're going to do the final walk around, show you everything after it is done. And again, if you like this video, you enjoyed it. Um, if you could help us out and hit that subscribe button, it definitely helps our small channel and the algorithm. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. And if you have any questions.